floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. Welcome to the Wingman Show. I'm Drew Brown. We're here to inspire, entertain, and learn so we can all grow. Happiness and serenity are the keys. My friend, my wingman, my main man, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Paul Thompson. Hey, Paul. Good morning, Mr. Drew. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard from the one and only Drew Brown, Dark Gable, the American dream. He's the man, the myth, the legend. He's the pilot's pilot, the role model's role model, and most importantly, his royal fullness. Thank you for listening to the podcast, looking at the podcast. And if you could, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. We would appreciate it. I'm doing very good this morning, Mr. Drew. How are you? I'm doing great. You ready to start this show? I'm ready. All right. We'll check this out. That's where LeBron is not a role model. Right there. As much as I love LeBron. Now, you cannot. I'm not taking LeBron. Right. You cannot live with LeBron and in eight years be in the NBA if you don't have the physical capabilities of doing it. Correct. If you're the average guy, Stephon Curry's not average guy. Even if you're above average guy. Special athlete. Even if you're the above average guy, still not enough. Correct. The last guy on the bench is way above average. The last guy on the bench is better than 99% of the people in the world. Correct. 99, 99 and put a point and another nine. Another nine, yeah. My maybe another point, nine behind it. But do you see, a role model simply means that I roll myself after you. I want to be like you. Well, if you're with LeBron, you're going to be disappointed. You'll be smart. You'll be educated. But you ain't going to be stay, that. That brother is so bad. It's freaking scary. Mm-hmm. You know what I, I thought of this morning? He's not getting younger. He's still. Yes. No, he saying. spends. A million dollars on his body a year. How much? I think about a million. One million. Yes, on his body. So that's probably know, like little stuff. That's probably like little stuff. No, right that's more. food. That's oxygen. That's masseuses. That's special booty boop bop bop. bop. So you know what I wanted to do? What's what kind of facial products does he use? Because anybody who spends a million dollars on his body, I would imagine, tries to have the best stuff of everything. Wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. You think he uses regular deodorant? You think he uses ultra bright toothpaste or does he get it from Whole Foods? Superstar toothpaste. Could be. Well, Shaq gets Papa John's pizza. Do you understand that rich people have access to healthy food and poor people don't? Very much so. It's almost like some religions. It's exactly the opposite. Rich people should have to go because they have the ability to go find good food. And poor people should have the availability of healthy food. It's the best health care system you can make. You start properly feeding the people. Right. Well, a million years ago, back when I was young, everybody ate pretty healthy. That's because they didn't come up with shit to put in the food that makes it last for 15,000 years. If you had a yodel from back then, remember we were talking about Drake's yodels, and if you put Ding it out on, on, on the uh, boardwalk, it'd still yeah. be there. It's still there, yeah. Basically, if they go into Mars for six months, they, they can load it up. It'll be good for several trips. You, you this know. is how you should know about food. If you put margarine outside and flies don't eat it, there's something wrong. Margarine and all that is one atom away from plastic. Right. Now, butter, if you put butter, so I have this fancy schmancy butter dish because my daughter got it. In other words, she's raising me on a a $50 butter dish that you keep next to the stove that you have room temperature butter. Okay, that's how hootsie tootsie people live. So it's a real marble. It's beautiful. It's from, you know, that fancy store uh, that you buy. Uh, 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 William Sonoma? Yes, it's from William Sonoma. So perfect, Paul. So it's a marble. It's beautiful. I love it. But I wouldn't ever buy something like that. Okay? Just not in my... Anyway, so it's fancy. And whenever you have pancakes, because I have those keto pancakes or keto waffles, you just slice into that, and that's that room soft butter, right? I said, you know that Irish butter that costs twice as much? 
Have you ever mm-hmm. seen it in the store? I see. I've gotten some. I've got yeah. some. Okay. You put that in there, that shit turns green. The other butter stays there for just nice and soft. Mm. You put that Irish butter in there, in four, five, six days, it's green. How about that? All right, yeah. we'll check this out. They have black slaves today. Not I just could. Arabs, other people too. Blacks no, have black slaves today. Let's not get this shit mixed up. One of the interesting things, and it's funny, the way people think of themselves is different than here. Uh, <clears throat> there's a good number of those folks who would, I would look at, you say, well, they are blacks. You know, they don't identify as black. They don't see themselves black. It doesn't so matter. People- what, well, of course they're not black, Paul, because we are right. People are not designated by the melanin in their skin. Right. It is it's all contrived. I'm saying. It's all so contrived. They- it's all contrived. Correct. So when they say black people do X, they're talking about some little kid in Senegal. They are. Mm -hmm. Because when he comes here, they're going to say him. My point being, if we stop with the melanin issue and we start with how people are, and actually we'll talk about the shootings, but let's get into this slavery thing, because the articles you sent me were so interesting. And I appreciate your knowledge because sometimes I just come from the gut. I'm not kidding, Paul. I'm not kidding about that at all. And I need some substance behind me. So whoever was writing this article about the origins of the slave trade was trying to say it's not really black selling blacks. That's not really how it started. It started with people going to Africa and trying to raid tribes except they got their asses kicked all the time. So that became too dangerous. They first went there to just take people. Okay? That didn't work. The next thing they did was go trade. So who did they trade with? With Black people. The article says that these white people or Arabs, as whoever they were, ripped ripped the Black people off. No kidding. No kidding. And they usually weren't honorable. Really? Do you really think so? But those were black people who sold black people. Once again, disputing the myth of melanin. These were assholes who sold people. Mm -hmm. Period. And you want to know something? That's not us. We keep saying we sold we. We, I didn't sell shit. I haven't sold anything. I protected this country. I took care of my family. I went to school. I did a lot of things, some bad things, but I didn't sell anybody and I never was sold. That's what really aggravated me about the name change thing. Remember that? And we could even talk about black names at one time because some black people, you could tell when they were born. Mm -hmm. You could tell if they were during that Afro-American, African big thing because now their names are all African. Yeah, that started in the 60s. I remember that, right, late 60s. Correct, because I have some cousins like that. Or you could tell that they come straight out of the hood with Shawanda, Kalanda, Bawanda. And, and the problem being that that is your that is your right to name your child. Mm-hmm. But in today's society, that's not going to help them progress. And you, I would think you'd want to give everything your kid to your kid that would help him progress. Yeah, uh, you know, you could do any name you want, but if you're going to be like that, if you're going to go ex- somewhat extreme, reality is you need, you need to be an, La- you, need, you need to be an entrepreneur. How many Laquita CEOs do you know? I'm just saying because you would know about it. That that's how unusual that name is. Mm-hmm. So what I was saying about the name thing also is when they said that it was a slave name, the Cassius Clay thing, that really pissed my father off. You know why? Because my daddy, my daddy's daddy named him what he wanted to. And my granddaddy was no slave. And my daddy named me Drew also. So I'm Drew the third. And I named my son Drew also, Drew the fourth. I didn't name him like George Foreman, all the kids, George. Mm -hmm. But we have the we have senior, junior, third and fourth. And you're going to tell me that that's a slave name. How dare you? So that's my thing on slavery. Black people didn't sell. Black people. In this world of ignorance, they did. Let's not forget that. But the truth is, bad people sold people. Okay. And remember, Black people are not slaves. You taught me this, Dr. Paul. Black people were enslaved. Black people are the bomb. White people are the bomb. People are the bomb. 
ignorant assholes aren't worth the spit in my mouth. Yeah. Fathers who don't take care of their kids ain't worth the spit in my mouth. So the key question to me, Mike, where do we go from here? You go on the back, go back to the 15th century, the 6th century, the 2nd century. How about 2021 and 2022? Where are we going? <clears throat> that's that's the question. Where are, are we you going? Asking me? Yeah. Oh, it's easy, Paul. The, the question is very easy. You're living it. Most Black people, we put it in the beginning of the show, the Black people that we know that are successful and millionaires and are doing well, other than people with special entertaining talents or athletic talents, are educated. Period. You can be anything you want if you're educated. Black people change their place in society by education. We have historically Black colleges all over. There is a place to get an education, whether you want to go to Texas or you want to go to Grambling or you want to go to my school, Southern University of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. My point is, if you really want to change this whole thing, we have to educate people. And it starts in kindergarten. We actually, like I said something before we start this conversation, we have men who don't take care of their children. That's the most ignorant, low down thing I can think of. And, you know, some people brag about it. Man, I got 14 kids and 14 women. Yeah. yeah. You get 14 spits on the ground. You worthless right. piece of shit. A, a child needs two parents, two men, two women. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a family, I'm talking about unity. Children need a man like figure. Well, some people would disagree with you now. Good. Well, Guess I don't, what? I don't need ain't well, working. Well, quite, yeah, exactly. You know, so you say, I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need it. Well, I'd say, well, how is it going? And it's not going good. And that's part of the reason, that, you know, you go to your car, you need to walk, you need to look around because you have a large number of folks who've never heard males, particularly and females. You know, it's not just the males. Some of, the, some of these women, females are pretty rough. My God, those, those videos you sent me They're about the rough. airline fights. Yeah. The airline fights, uh, you know, it's maybe those not wearing a mask. Fighting, but... No, those people fighting on the just the whole idea of being that violent. Yeah, they're, you know, they're in the security line and, and a fight breaks out here at the airport. You're about to board the plane or it's it's two minutes late or something like that. And it's a it's a UFC in the whole terminal. Uh, most of them are eh, young adults. They're not teenagers. You the kids don't fight that much. They're young adults. So you know, you, yeah, right. going to jail don't do, are they that ignorant realizing that it's a federal crime to fight in an airplane do, do are they that ignorant of it or do they yes. just not care uh both both so people don't care there are people who don't care about going to jail no, and ruining right. their life and having a federal record there are people who are raised to not give a shit about that one aspect right well if you know you live your life every other day is do what i want can't tell me no. You've got people that enforce it. So you go to school and you got a, a resource officer, not not resources like uh, coal and oil and natural gas, <laughs> but, 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 but to beat your butt or put you in handcuffs. I remember going to my son's high school one time and they deliver something. And, you know, the, the resource officer is leading out a child and he's got he's got his he's handcuffed. He's in he, you know, a lot of little kids like 16, 17. No words are spoken. He's just leading them to the car. And I'm looking, look how unfortunate that was. A beautiful day. And I said, my God, you know, and the nice school wasn't broken down. But uh, there's a lot of stuff. And that was years ago. Paul, years this ago. is a perfect segue into what you wanted to talk about. And that's that open carry law in Texas. Open carry. Yeah, I think uh, I think they've passed it. You can carry a gun. You don't have to be licensed. You don't have to have any registration. And it's really for uh, carrying a handgun. They already had open carry for long guns. But now you can do it with a pistol. So it's easier to carry. So most people will be carrying. So you're saying crime will go down now in Texas? Uh, some may go down. <laughs> it's the same thing in Tennessee. They're trying, I think they're done in Tennessee. They're about to do it. You, think, it un you think unregistered people should be able to carry guns? Because the one thing, you know, we just had a shooting 
I guess we saw it today, right? Uh, in San Jose. Yes. The big one in San Jose. He burnt his house down first. Oh, did he? I didn't see that. Burnt his house down, went to his job, killed his fellow workers, and then killed himself. Then when they asked, when they did interview somebody who knew him, they said he was a violent alcoholic with violent mood swings. Mm -hmm. So what do all these mass murderers have in common? Is that they're all white? Is that they're all black? Or is it that they all have mental illness? Yes. What do all these homeless people have in common? So are we going to fight homeless or do we need to fight mental illness? Are we going to fight guns? Or are we going to fight mental illness? And guess what? It's on us too, Paul. Remember, we had a friend who went violent in an airplane and really hurt somebody and almost took out FedEx. We knew him. I spoke to him a week before this happened. You want to know something? I didn't see one sign of him being able to do that. He's still serving life. But I had no clue. Not a clue. But yeah, he was going to get fired, did. Paul. He, he was going to get fired. He did just what this guy did. He was going to take out everybody. I well, have they, guns. I'm happy to register. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm registered. My, my name's on a database for all kinds of stuff. But the, as, as the Ayatollah would say, it's not a problem with guns. He calls it crazy mismanagement, I think and that, which, is, which is a politically incorrect saying of, of saying, you know, mental health concerns. And I see that as a rising thing, whether they're guns or not. You have a lot of people here who are really mentally unstable yes. pre-pandemic. -pa pre so I'm going to turn it on you. How do we fix that? How do we fix that? Because that's the problem, I believe. And those same mentally unstable people are raising children. So that goes to that. You know what I'm saying? When you have a mentally unstable person raising a stable person, that stable person becomes unstable. Somebody had to teach somebody that it's okay to go to jail. That it's okay to throw away your goddamn career. Oh, maybe you don't have a career. Right. You know, it's like people will put a tattoo Right here, if they're not a millionaire already, you uh -huh. know what they're saying? I really it should just say, I accept minimum wage. Or or no wage. I don't need a job. How do you know how do you live without a job? Really? How do you do this whole welfare thing? How in the hell do you live without a job? So is there a way to do it? Because obviously there is. Not by black people. There are more white people on welfare than black people. Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. There are poorer white people in this country than there are black people. Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. Because once again, not melanin, not melanin, just educated, uneducated, good, bad, simple. So what do we do, Paul? You're the doctor. You got, I don't know how many degrees you have. Why do you keep getting more educated? Why are you successful? Why am I successful? Why do we have money? For real. Tell the truth. We're educated is the one thing. It's not that we're both black. It's not that we're both from Harlem. It's not that we're both only children. It's not that we both have a son, a daughter, and a wife. It's not that we both worked at FedEx. It's not that we both flew goddamn badass attack jets off aircraft carriers. Top gun shit. No, it's not that. It's we went to school, and I had no choice about it. So I do not want to get high and mighty about my education like I used to run around school going, oh, I can't wait to go to math. I was a badass kid like everybody else. Yep, but yep, I, yep, yep. No, I just didn't have a choice between high school and college. Honest to God, it felt like going. Remember when you went from elementary to junior high or from junior high to high school? It was just a natural progression. You couldn't wait to go. Right. 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 That's how I felt about college. Yeah. It was driven into me that long ago. That's how my children felt. That's how your children felt. That's how you felt. Wasn't a discussion at 17. Hey, do you want to take the year off? Right, Would you yeah. like to think about life? <laughs> <laughs> think about nothing. I've been, I've been, I've been rolling since I was five years old. And very, I have no, I have no gaps really, which is, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in that state employment or anything else. That's, and that's unusual. I realize that. Why is it unusual? What did you do to have jobs? What did you do to get an education? Did you put some time into it? Tell the truth. It's not luck. Certain opportunities may have been luck, or maybe not luck at all. Maybe, maybe you think it's divine. 
I believe there is something that's omnipotent. And that means all knowing, all powerful. And I believe I just go with that flow 100%. I call him shorty, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. I believe that he knows everything. I don't know anything. Only thing I hope to do is do good in this podcast. I don't know anything. Every time, every time something new happens, I'm like, damn, I just learned something. Because my ego's intact. I don't care about being wrong. I love being wrong now. Because then I learned something. What else you want to talk about? I got a wingman if you want. Yeah, give me your wingman. False wingman. Bad wingman. Okay? He's flying on your wing, but he's bringing you into enemy territory. You have to have a wingman that knows how to fly his ass off and actually should be a better pilot than you because he's the one looking after you. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people who fly with other people and they're not good wingmen. Matter of fact, they bring them into crashes all the time. You need to be careful who you ask as your wingman. Mm -hmm. And that guy we were talking about, Shorty, he's my number one. Actually, I'm his wingman because I just follow whatever he does. I just, wherever you go, you know, when you're flying formation, Paul, how you just look at one part of the plane, it doesn't matter if you're upside down, right side, or it just doesn't matter because you just stick on that part and do whatever with the power and the stick that you need to stay right there. Right. Well, that's how I feel right now with Shorty. So I think a wingman, you don't know how much it means to me that we have found each other doing this show. You just, man, you've made me, man. You're the bomb, Paul. You're the bomb wingman. I will tell you that. You do, what did you say you have? You have something of honesty. You're, the, you're great. What did Ayatollah call you? Oh, he says, I, I, I suffer from one malady. You suffer from an irreversible case of terminal decency. Well, guess what? To me, that means you're a badass wingman. You got anything to tell the people, Paul? I'd say stay around good people. Lose the losers. If they're headed nowhere and they're not doing anything good, you really need to get rid of them. I might even include people in your own family, which is which is difficult. But there's so many folks that I can see that are suffering because of things that are done by you know generations before or people they're dealing with now and if they just change their company start reading do something different than the average knucklehead on the street does you might have a better life i see all these folks who just they walk around they're they're angry 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 at what i don't know i don't know they're 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 buying milk or in line and some people watch tv and they see all these people having more than they have so that means their life sucks Oh yeah, that's not yeah. Cut down on your TV watching. <laughs> no, so they books. watch Jerry Springer, and then their life is good again. Now you say you're on Jerry Springer. Tell I me, tell Jerry us about Springer. that. I did tell us about that. The, I did it with the actor that just died, Paul Muni. Um, oh, Paul Muni, the comedian. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he wrote for Richard Pryor. He's a great comedian. Wow, I couldn't believe you told me that. So anyway, I did the Jerry Springer show when he was a talk show host. He was the mayor, I believe, in Indianapolis, I think it was. Or Cincinnati. Or Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Right. He was the mayor of Cincinnati, and he started a talk show, like the Phil Donahue show, Sally Jesse Raphael. So I was doing the whole talk show circuit. And so when I, myself and Paul Mooney were on, you know, we had a great show and everything. And it wasn't maybe even a year later, that thing flipped to like, I love saying I was on the Jerry Springer show. Because and that was before they were they were fighting and all that stuff, right? Well, obviously, what happened is that somebody started fighting on one of his regular shows. Ratings went up, and they said, "See you later, Drew Brown and Paul Mooney." Got to do that. <laughs> Two lovers who don't love, but they love because their mother and father were lovers in another life. I don't know what to tell you. So, anyway, I love you, Paul. Thanks for doing the show. Thanks for having me on. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. We'd appreciate it. 100%. We hope you enjoyed our show. We truly thank you for your time. It's our most valuable commodity. So we're still floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. Dr. Paul Thompson, Drew Brown, We both say goodbye. See you guys later. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye.